bride. You already, you already see us, Lord, as your bride, which is such, such a very sweet, beautiful, loving statement, Lord. So we have a lot to do to cleanse. We turn to you today and seek your wisdom, your guidance as our teacher, capital T. Lord, where there are areas by which we need to remove the old man, the old woman in us, Lord, we need to remove that so that we can become a clean bride, so that we can pursue this wonderful path of holiness to which you're calling us, each one of us, Lord. You want everyone on the planet to follow you. And so we just turn this day over to you. We welcome you. Speak through us. This is all about you. And I pray this in Yeshua's holy name. Our Lord Jesus, we are known by his Greek name, but it's Yeshua, the Messiah. We pray this all in his name above all names. Amen and amen. Well, praise God. Praise God. Wow. You know, I... I've really been swamped with things virtually all night <laughs> from the Lord, a huge download after we had this, quote, debate between our two presidential candidates last night, Susan, and it was, it was a real revealing statement about not just politics, but about the Lord showed me there is a very clear connection to what happened to Joshua in the battle of AI. I forgot how you would pronounce that in the Hebrew, but they lost that battle because one man opened the door to the enemy by his covetousness. He wanted the jewels or the gold or whatever, and he stole that. And that just was an abomination to the Lord that instead of seeking the Lord for the wisdom and the obedience to, to honor that battle and do it rightly, the Lord had to teach them the lesson. So I'm writing all about that. And the body of Christ needs all in every nation needs to wake up because there was a spirit really that's the lady who's running for president has really never claimed a limitation on a uh, an abortion saying that it's really justified up until the very end of birth and even last night was not able to answer that where they asked her that question so it's life and death and it's a real battle for each one of you and me to get right with the lord it's it's all about cleansing the bride it's, it's far beyond politics. It is politics. And so people need to vote biblically and all. But on top of that, we have to look at the instructions directly from the Lord and following them. And that's the lesson from the book of Joshua, where they lost that key battle, then later had to come back and defeat that enemy. So I'm praying we're going to lear, learn from these things. We're going to repent personally and then as a nation in due season. But it may take um, some shattering and some shaking as is prophesied and spoken of in Hebrews chapter 12. We've got to um, honor the shaking. And here we had 23 years ago today, 9-11 emergency spiritual emergency call which we've not really honored fully and then last night the debacle is what i looked at and so what we have is september 10th september 11th we've got a a double 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 message from the lord to wake up emergency code red if you really wanted a nation based on godly principles then that's that's how much is hanging in the balance it's either now or it will not be ever godly uh, rooted again we will lose those godly roots in which 
it was founded. So it's a it's a dramatic day, and um, in a wild way, I'm very excited. It's 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 about repentance <laughs> all the more. Hello, hello, hello. We have got to repent, and this is true for every nation. One last little P.S. I was on the Australia Neil's call yesterday. It was profound, was beautiful, was deep there with us. They had some beautiful prayers and support. And Kim was with us. Uh, and here she is again today. Welcome, Kim. Kim, by the way, did part of the communion service, which was beautiful at the end of the call. And um, so really, this is not just about the United States. It's about every every nation on the planet that we have got to turn with a healthy fear of almighty God. And it's not about men or women. It's not about a political uh, person who's going to um, save us. It's clearly only about almighty God, um, Elohim. It's all about the one, the one that favors Israel, the one that created his chosen people, the one who opened up the promised land to them, wherever their foot may be trod. And so we turn to him. He is the one that, the only one in way by which we can be rescued in a nation. It's him. Well, praise God. Thanks for <clears throat> letting me preach there for a minute. <laughs> oh, wow. So here's, Here's this opening page on these slides, really sets the big picture by which you can teach with your prayer teams. Second Corinthians 6, 16 through 7, 1 is a beautiful way by which you can explain to them, what are we doing here? And this one is from the, I think the new King James, it says, what agreement has the temple of God with idols? For you are the temple of the living God. Well, that presupposes you've already repented and come into the kingdom, changed your thinking. But yes, once there you are, you receive the Holy Spirit, you're the temple of the living God. As God has said, I'll dwell in them and walk among them. I'll be their God, they shall be my people. Therefore, come out from among them and be separate, says the Lord. Don't touch what's unclean, and I will receive you. I'll be a father to you. You shall be, look at this, you shall be my sons and daughters, says the Lord Almighty. Wow, those people debating last night had no clue about that, I don't think. But that's for them also. Pray for them to find the Lord at some point. You shall be my sons and daughters, says the Lord Almighty. Therefore, having these promises, beloved, here we go. Look at this. Let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. I just love it how that last several words are perfecting holiness in the fear of God. There's just so much spiritual food in that. So even if you're starting from day one, you're, if you truly in your heart are now directed towards the living God, the Elohim, Adonai, Yeshua, you are now perfecting holiness. You're walking on that godly path. And holiness is the, the gift now that we are given as royal members of the royal priesthood, the Lord's calls us to be holy as he is holy. And that means that you remove all that's not of him in your thinking and your behavior. And then in the fear of God is the most beautiful reality of getting close to him with this healthy reverence that he's number one in your life. You're hanging on to him. You're questioning him, even debating with him sometimes, whatever, that he loves that. Just to be with him, to converse with him, that healthy fear. That is the way by which you, you and I cleanse as his bride. 
And then this is directly spoken of in Ephesians 5, 25 to 27. Again, I'm so sorry that people debating in this presidential debate didn't even mention anything about God last night. But here's this beautiful, beautiful series of verses. Ephesians 5, 25 to 27. Husbands, love your wives, just as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for her, that he might sanctify and cleanse her with the washing of water by the word, that he might present her to himself. Yes, that's what's going on here. He wants to present us to himself, a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that she should be holy and without blemish. Yes, that's the least we can do given all that he did. Jesus, Yeshua on the cross, his blood is what cleanses us. His blood is what redeems us. And so we say, praise God, praise God. Yeah, Kim just has mentioned in the chat, they mentioned not one concept of God, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Very disappointed more points were not addressed in the healing of this nation. Bingo, yes, 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 yes. You know, so sad because the nation was founded, other nations such as Australia too, perhaps, I don't know the whole history of South Africa, but it could also be there also. Some of the early people that showed up, knowing they were facing incredible odds, called on the Lord at all times. And for example, in the American Revolution, before the war was won, they held in Congress what they called a Continental Congress, eight different days of repentance, what they called days of humiliation, fasting, and prayer. And uh, we've not had one in the United States since 1918 to end the World War I. So yeah, I'm with you, Kim. I, I was just grieved. You know, I didn't expect a uh, pastoral speech from Mr. Trump, but I just had hoped that he might have referred somehow to, to the roots in this nation. Yes, especially since he was saved by the Lord that day that somebody shot at him. Yes, yes. I, don't under, I really don't understand that. I don't get it either. I think he missed a huge opportunity. Yes. So let me just pray that he would come close to you. Uh, I even pray that for Miss Harris. Lord, she's got Hindu roots. She's a New Ager. She's a socialist, if not a communist like her dad. And I just pray she would come into the kingdom too, Lord. You, If you can take Saul on the road to Damascus, you can take Tamara or Tamala Harris, and uh, you can, you can, any one of us, Lord, we all need you. It's all about you. And it's all about every nation. It's not just about the USA. It's so clear to me when we had the call to Australia, we're just one, one team now. One mind, one accord. It's really beautiful. Well, praise God. Let's look at the next slide. Guess I also want to say one more thing, and maybe Linda will help me with this too. And that is, I had just so hoped Trump would proclaim his love for Israel, that he would be bold, even if I think he's made a few mistakes. He's been more pro-Israel than a lot of other people and certainly more than his opponent. And I, I felt he did not strongly stand for Israel, strongly stand for Israel. So there was a complete opportunity that was wasted. Okay, back to <laughs> the call today. Thanks for your patience. Here's another good page for you to explain to people what we're doing in repentance. It's not about starting a church. It's, we're not starting a denomination. We're encouraging personal and national repentance. That's all we do. The gift of Shuva, the gift. We spent a whole beautiful Zoom yesterday on this. There'll be other parts of that today. But here's a good 
overview, including these verses from Revelation 3, 19 to 22, and that graphic of Yeshua knocking on the door of our minds and hearts, he says, as many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. That's godly, fatherly love that would say, don't cross this road until <laughs> the light's in your favor. This is the kind of right kind of rebuke and chasten we need. Be zealous, therefore, he said, the risen Christ, and repent. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I'll come into him and will sup with him and he with me. To him that overcomes, will I grant to sit with me on my throne, even as I also overcame and am set down with my father in his throne. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the spirit says unto the churches. Yes, yes, yes. I'm just praying that this would be a wake up call for the church's judgment begins in the house of God. The house of God in the United States has been largely lukewarm. We fit the description of that seventh church of Laodicea. And there's wonderful exceptions like Linda and Terry Meyer have their church outside of Kansas City. I'm sure you guys are not included in that group, but um, many, many, many churches are asleep and even worse, sometimes apostate. Now, the other thing that's on this page is a good way to look at the, the narrow path forward. It's from 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 3 to 6. And it says, is his divine power is given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us by glory and virtue, by which have been given to us exceedingly great and precious promises. Yes, Lord, thank you. That through these you may be, look at this, partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that's in the world through lust. But also for this very reason, giving all diligence, here's the path up the narrow path to holiness, add to your faith virtue, to virtue knowledge, to knowledge self-control, uh, that was not too evident last night, to self-control perseverance, to perseverance godliness, to godliness brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness the love of Yeshua, so that when people see you in a room, you light up a room, you're the salt and the light, you bring Christ, the Messiah, to people in your words, in your voice, in your look, in your attitude, you are the walking salt and light. And um, so that's so exciting. That's, that's really our purpose here is to support you in that walk. And um, we all need it. We all fall short of the glory of God, but there's no condemnation in Christ. He's just asking us to partake of the walk of his holiness. It's such a beautiful honor. Well, praise God, I've spoken a lot. Does anyone want to jump in and challenge me or, or anything more that you would want to say? Go on ahead, even on the issue of Israel or whatever, mm -hmm. go on ahead. No, 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 no challenge. But I, I do want to share what came to mind after the prayer with um, Australia last night. And as I was sitting, listening to the debate on the 24-7 um, prayer call, that the first scripture that came to my mind was um, Matthew 4, 8 to 9, where the devil took, took uh, Jesus to the, the highest place in, in uh, Israel and showed him the kingdoms, all the land, I guess, and um, all the kingdoms of the world, and what was considered splendor, the splendor of all, the majesty of God, though the, though the devil was not giving God the praise and the glory. And the devil says, all, I, all this I will give you if you bow down and worship me. Something, yes. something to that effect. And it's awesome that Jesus did not take him up on that. But we do see when people do take him up on that, what happens. 
So I think we have to continually re re repent within ourselves to just to keep us on the right track and renounce Jesus. Yeah. Wow. Excellent. That's exactly right. That's really good. Thank, Thank you, Kim. That's spot on. That's really good. Thank you. God bless you. Yeah. Anyone else? Any more comments before we go on to the next slide? Yeah, you know, the other scripture that came to my mind, and I didn't have a minute to look it up, but it's in Hebrews chapter 12, right at the end, where the Lord says, I'm just going to shake everything that can be shaken so that basically I will remain. Everything that is shaken loose is not of God. And so we are now in this roller coaster shaking in every nation to remove all that's not of him. And it's not fun. It's, <laughs> I mean, it's, it's very, very, very different from the world I knew as a young kid. Um, growing up, uh, I think there was a time of grace in this nation and we even had a, an amendment to the Pledge of Allegiance saying, under God. I mean, there was a president that went to church and he heard a, a preacher say, hey, we should really put this on the Pledge of Allegiance. Within a couple of weeks, Congress and the president signed it. And this was President Eisenhower, 1953 or four, somewhere in there. And um, that might have been the high point. <laughs> <laughs> but in short, we all have to, we have to really look at this issue one by one and not be tempted by the enemy. That was really a good word. Thank you, Kim. Yeah, it's really all focusing on him. Don't take the bait. Well, praise God. Let's look at the next slide. Now, we put this in and had a wonderful discussion on this yesterday, and I hope you won't think that this is presumptuous, because really this is a beginning of a beginning of a beginning of the, quote, summary of the Lord's plan. You could put your own plan together. Um, I mean, maybe your plan would be just John 3.16. That's enough. However, it struck me how powerful it is to read the book of Daniel, to read the book of Micah, to read the book of Isaiah. And it all draws us then to Luke and then to Revelation. So we put it here. Really, it should be a, a beginning summary. <laughs> You're welcome to just add to it or subtract. But look at how powerful Daniel 2 is. I just think it's really coming into focus. He said, as the toes were partly iron and partly clay, this kingdom will be partly strong and partly brittle. Just as you saw the iron mixed with baked clay, so the people will be a mixture. Wow, that's certainly the case in our USA today. Will not remain united any more than iron mixes with clay. In the time of those kings... Wow, look at this. The God of heaven will set up a kingdom that will never be destroyed, nor it will be left to another people. It'll crush all those kingdoms, bring them to an end, but it will itself endure forever. This is the meaning of the vision of the rock cut out of a mountain, but not by human hands. A rock that broke the iron, the bronze, the clay, the silver, and the gold to pieces. Yes, yes, yes. So God has this beautiful, remarkable plan and it builds up our faith. The more you really, I encourage you as, as just as a wonderful piece of spiritual homework, go through and make up your own plan, share it with your family, share it with your church, share it with those that you're teaching. You don't have to start with Daniel. I mean, start with Genesis 1, if you wish. Wherever you want to start, there's a beautiful, remarkable plan. We just put these several together as a incentive for you to teach others. 
But look at how this speaks, for example, in the book of Micah, which is very rarely preached, but it's so applicable. Look at Mark of Micah 4, 6 and 7. In that day, declares the Lord, I'll gather the lame, I'll assemble the exiles and those I brought to grief. I'll make the lame my remnant, those driven away a strong nation. The Lord will rule over them in Mount Zion from that day and forever. Wow. Just something strong to lean on. And then this wonderful word that you all know in Isaiah 9, the whole book of Isaiah being so anointed for this year, 2024. <laughs> Isaiah 9, 6 and 7 says, for us to us, for us, a child is born to us. A son is given. The government will be on his shoulders. He'll be called wonderful counselor, mighty God, everlasting father, prince of peace, of the greatness of his government and peace. There'll be no end. I would just add, and we don't even have room on this one page, but in Matthew 28, 18, the risen Christ having for 40 days traveled all over, even up into Galilee um, to do a worship service, as I understand. He then said, all authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. So even yesterday, this quote debate is all under his authority. He all knew it was coming. We're all to learn from it. We're all to absorb the lesson, the spiritual lessons. What did you get out of it? So praise God. Praise God. It's all about coming closer to the Lord. May the I, other thing. Yeah, I, go ahead. May I respond? I, I love that because my heart immediately went to the greatest love story of God, the rescue plan. He just loved us so much so that with, um, I think it's, it's second, second Corinthians where we know Christ had no sin, but God made him become sin so that in Christ, we could become right with him. And that really speaks uh -huh. into how you opened this particular hour. Yes, That's, yes, yes. That's and by the way, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read what Linda has just mm -hmm. uh, posted in the chat. She's having issues with her audio and so forth, although we can see her. I mean, guess what? Spiritual battle. <laughs> and she says, I can't make anything work, can't unmute or talk at all, but I wanted to talk about Trump. He was on IFA, that's Inter Intercessors for America prayer and had several people and pastors praying for him. He wanted this prayer time. So I believe the Lord was over him last night, even though he could not say all he wanted. Yes. Oh, I wish I could talk. I mean, nothing will work. The only thing I can do now is use chat, etc. Well, if, if it opens up at all at any point, Linda, you're, please jump on. And I know exactly what you're saying. I know exactly what you're saying. There was a reality that some people had seen a python, a snake, a leviathan, whatever that that spirit, which is, of course, very, really directed to Hinduism uh, and Buddhism, um, New Age and so forth, that that is hates it's really the spirit of antichrist hates the godly roots of this nation. So that could well have been all over um, that even the studio itself could have been um, filled with that kind of spirit that Mr. Trump in that moment did not know how to remove. So praise God. But yeah, in short, you know, when you put together this summary of the Lord's plan. It's just a beautiful, powerful, victorious plan. And you and I are the little people that have to teach this to our family, to our neighbors, to the people in the marketplace that need prayer. And it's all, it's all really beautiful. 
I just love this also, Luke chapter one, the angel shows up, verse 30, and says to Miriam, or Mary is her name in Greek, don't be afraid, you found favor with God, you'll conceive and give birth to a son and you're to call him Jesus, he'll be great and will be called the son of the most high. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father, David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. So here we are again under that kingdom. The risen Christ has all authority in heaven and on earth. And then this we've cited Revelation eleven fifteen. Clearly, there's going to be some shaking between now and then, but here's what 1115 says. The seventh angel sounded his trumpet. There were loud voices in heaven which said, the kingdom of the world has become the kingdom of our Lord and of his Messiah, and he will reign forever and ever. So that's what we want to do is go to that kingdom of the Messiah. Jews and Gentiles who want to go to the Messiah. He is the kingdom. He is the Lord, Lord God Almighty. I just am reflecting also back the 250 years ago when we started this revolutionary war. Really, in 1774, they met for the first time in the Continental Congress in Philadelphia. And a key word then was we'll, we are to have no other king but Jesus. In other words, not King George in England, King George III, a tyrant. We want only King Jesus. They were public about it. That, of course, was never mentioned last night. Never mentioned last night. So the godly roots of this nation are really in jeopardy and it's up to you and me personally to, one, to vote biblically and additionally to just repent for any way by which we have not um, spoken enough to family, friends, and neighbors to get them into the kingdom. It's all, all about preserving the kingdom roots. So praise God. Praise God. Well, let's look at the next slide. So here's really the focus of today, cleansing as his bride. And it's something to be done in every nation, by the way. So Ephesians 5, we already talked about. In the complete Jewish Bible, it says, husbands, love your wife just as the Messiah loved the messianic community, that's another way to look at what we are doing. We are, we are joining, once you really have repented and joined the kingdom that Jesus was preaching about and his disciples first preached about, it's the messianic community, Jew and Gentile. It says, indeed, gave himself up on his behalf in order to set it apart for God. Yes, he did this to bless his Abba Father making it clean through immersion in the mikvah, so to speak. That's the water, the pool by which the Levites cleanse before going into the temple in order to present the messianic community himself as a bride to be proud of without a spot wrinkle or any such thing, but holy and without defect. So the Lord has this beautiful plan. He's already looked at you and me as his bride, however much ha, we need to be cleansed, right? And we read this in Revelation, Revelation 19, 7 to 9. Let's rejoice and be glad. Let's give him the glory. For the time has come for the wedding of the Lamb, capital L, and his bride has prepared herself. Fine linen, bright and clean, has been given to her to wear. Fine linen means the righteous deeds of God's people. 
the angel said to me, write how blessed are those who've been invited to the wedding feast of the Lamb. Yes, I can't imagine what eternity would feel like unless you were invited to that wedding feast. And then he added, these are God's very words. We need to tell people that there is an attorney in front of them. It's either with him or without him. It's either super joyful, wonderful, beyond what we can even imagine today, or it's just the reverse, horrific hell dominated, horrific eternity without him for which there's no recovery. The other point that I think is so beautiful about the bride in the very, almost the, literally the last verse of the Bible, you and I, assuming by then we're the bride, along with another billion people or whatever the number, the Lord knows what the number will be. We're included in this last call, last call that will go out to the everyone on the planet at that point. The spirit and the bride say, come. Let anyone who hears say, come. Let anyone who's thirsty come. Let anyone who wishes take the water. Here it is, the water of life free of charge. Yes, thank you, Lord. He gives that water of life, and we're included in the call. I, that really touches my heart. He didn't need the bride to do that. He could have done that alone as the spirit, and yet showing how, in effect, we're intimate with him, almost like a holy marriage. He includes us in this very last call for people to come into his kingdom. So here today, we're going to honor your privacy. We're for three minutes. I'll check back in. It'll be totally private. And check to see what is any spot or wrinkle that you may need to remove today. I'll honor your privacy. You don't have to share if later you want to, fine. But ask him, spend these three minutes with the Holy Spirit say, dear Lord, what you're my teacher, capital T. Is there a spot or a wrinkle you think that I need to remove today? And then you can have those three minutes of time with him in private. Remove it, honor it, repent, whatever. I honor your own free will and privacy. Later you want to share, that's great. So I'll check back in in three minutes. God bless you.
Well, praise God. Thank you for spending time with the Holy Spirit, your teacher. Anyone want, you don't have to, it's private, but anyone absolutely want to share, go on ahead. What you might have dealt with. Just now the Lord spoke to me and as you know, he brings all things into remembrance with yep. first, first John. So um, as a resident of the city of Rye, um, where my parents lived, there were many people who knew them in society and um, I'm grateful to them. But the Lord is reminding me that not everyone in my life, even then, were were the best for me. It's like Paul would say, all things are lawful, but may not be right for him. And I thank the Lord for having victory over all things in the precious blood of Jesus. Um, but those that have been, um, as, as some of my minister friends would say, those that have attached themselves to me do not have my benefit at heart. So I, I always thank the Lord for reminding me of that. Um, I don't know how to get rid of those people. <laughs> so I always pray, Lord, show me how to do that. Because these are the people who are, they're not just prosecutorial or overly negative or criticize everything that comes up. But their purpose, I believe, is to really tear down the kingdom. And their whole thing is bring the kingdom down. So the question becomes why people are trying to do that. So those people that do not have the kingdom's uh, interests at heart, I pray are removed. I don't know all of who they are, but I do know it's happened. And so in the mighty name of Jesus, Yeshua HaMashiach, our greatest Messiah, I pray for direction and how to do that in the mighty name, in the miraculous name, in the matchless name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Beautiful. Thanks for being so vulnerable, so open. That's just really beautiful. Anyone have a prayer for Kim or your own word of wisdom, whatever the Lord puts on your heart on, on how to support her in that? Well, my two cents is to just have you look up the, and maybe in the back of the book in the concordance, look up Antichrist and study antichrist and his ploys it's a spirit that is really the commanding spirit among all these other wicked spirits that we saw last night and i think the more you know about that spirit and take authority over it in the blood of jesus and the name and the word and so forth the more that you know and then take authority the less it will um enter into your world and and you will have a joy and freedom even over these people that are so clueless and need to find the lord yes yes so. thank you. you know it and many of them because of my father are in the justice system and even here where i live with the justice system in washington they live here so they know yeah. how to manipulate the system and i know that between the states of new york and connecticut and so I, I thank you for that. And I will definitely study on that. And um, I, I renounce the demons that actually motivate all of this to happen in the precious yeah. blood of Jesus. Because they have, they you are, you are so on target with that. They have no authority. And no. in the core of who Jesus is, in the true center of his heart and his love, they certainly don't have that authority. Right. Well, and guess what? Kamala Harris herself being a uh, humanist, if we could, at least she's that mm -hmm. uh, prosecutor and so forth. She is responding to that very same spirit, whether she knows it or not. It's activating her thinking. Mm -hmm. And so there it is. So very strong. And it was here yeah. in my backyard in San Francisco. It was here in California. It was here as a senator from California then as vice president now as a very likely quote president. Um, yeah, yeah. So we we have to just take it down as a spirit, Ephesians 6, 12, we're not wrestling against flesh and blood, but we wrestle against these principalities. Yes. yes. And there it is. 
So <laughs> it's spot on. So you're right in the center of the center of it. You see the. I really the, do. The, yes. Yeah. Thank you. I really do. Especially and in prison ministry with my area, they are combating the same things. And I'm praying, I'm lifting up prison ministry up and down the coast as well. Because it, it's all with, Ky, you know, um, not Kyos. What's the name of that again? I forgot just that quick. Um, but I'm seeing the moves of demons trying to really stop things. And I had been involved in the in some of that um, distension when I was trying to start with CBS prison ministry my my um it's community bible study and that's who i've been studying with for since 2007 you know truth be told wow. and so um and we're studying matthew now but my whole thing is i i see the move of the demons and it's almost i can from day to day there's a transformation that i don't like yeah being, being in the center of what that really represents you know well, praise so, God, you're in a great place to uh, blow the whistle. You're a great place to uh, speak out the truth, and uh, they cannot stand the truth. And you're citing that beautiful reality of what our our Lord himself had to go through, the temptation in the wilderness directly from Satan. That's exactly what you're dealing with, that he's mm -hmm. trying so hard to uh, tempt you again and um, you now have overcome him Kim it's really beautiful and you can, you. you can just when the Lord gives you the green light and the timing I say blow the whistle blow the whistle on this stuff Amen. And Amen. If, it's not, if it's not you or me or anyone on this call who else I mean he, the Lord's calling us to be little people but we have allowed beautiful voice uh under the blood of of the lamb yes yes he'll use, I, he'll use us yeah he'll yes. use you yeah in a in a mighty way i see it through i see that through my pastor lifting up pastors really yeah which is, which is really i that the invitation i got from the lord in my spirit to learn more about writing sermons and you know more he uh, and i'm doing that on my own it's you know not that but I, you know, I love education. So it's really been, he's been stretching me in that, in that regard. But I, I want to continue to lift up the body of Christ because that demon from, from that foreign center of who he is, as we deliver people from that, yeah. they all need to remain strong. So as not to return to that kind of an ill. Amen. You know? Well, I'm also reminded, I know I'm talking a lot, but I'm reminded of Mark chapter 6, yes. verse 12. Those first disciples went out and they preached repentance. And then look what happened. The next verse, 13, deliverance and healing. Amen. So today, that's what we're doing, cleansing the bride. Deliverance and healing follows repentance. And that's, I'm grateful for that because that's where the Lord has led me to strengthen myself. Cool. That's exactly where I am. You see. Praise yeah. God. You really see. So I, I praise him. Yes. Thank you. God bless you. Oh, thank God bless you. Now, Linda, we welcome you back. Are you able to speak? I can. Can you hear me? <laughs> yes. I can for a minute. I don't know what's happening happening my husband came in and helped me the whole thing just that's fell sweet apart. yeah i don't know we don't know how long it'll stay i think we're having trouble with our internet well, can i you, go can ahead I, if you had something on your heart whatever it is well first of all our eyes need to stay on jesus and him alone and um nowhere else and when they when this was on last night, I finally had to leave it. I couldn't take it. But um, IFA prayed. I think it was Trump's request. I'm I am not positive about that. But Intercessors for America is someone I really appreciate. I know who their hearts are, and I don't believe it was you know who. The enemy could have been all over 
uh, Kamala Harris. That's a, that's, you know, you could see light and dark. And I know Trump has a different personality and probably one I wouldn't ever be going that direction. But the man accepted Christ before this shooting thing. Um, they have evidence of it. He talks about it. But he is a wild man. <laughs> and so he goes off, you know, left and right. He needs the time to be with the Lord. But I believe God shut his mouth and didn't let him say some of those things because they would have dropped to the ground because ABC is totally in the place in government for, for killing babies and just ABC is completely in, in um, synced with the Democrats. So him saying anything like that, God knew where it was going to go. I believe because the prayers to God are strong, not the prayers to the enemy, the prayers to God, he's all powerful. And yeah. I believe that he knew when to keep quiet and when to speak. Just like all of us, he has a whole gob of growing to do in the Lord, don't we all? But I think that that for last night, those kind of things were stopped because all they do is go into the ground. I have had times when I go to witness to people and, you know, I just, it just came up and I would start witnessing and the Lord would halt me because they weren't going to take it in. They got to hear what I had said so far, but he knows because he's the one who saves. We don't, he does. Right. And he believed that he was the one who knew because he's all powerful. He knew what Trump could say and what he could not say. What we need to get down to is this is two sides. The one side wants to go toward the light. The other is definitely willing to go into the darkest spot. And this is, um, it's already been said prophetically, I'd say who if I could, right now I can't even think of names, but we are voting for God or against God is honestly what it down to. I'm just putting it in real simple terms. And um, I don't know if you know who John Finn is. He's a pastor. Of, he started all the house churches. And he just feels, this is just him talking. He's a man of God. Um, but he just feels that the Lord has impressed upon him that this election is going to mean whether we have four more years of being able to have that freedom to go after God in this country or for things to really change. And right. that is his, but anyway, the bottom line is that's what he says is sometimes God just closes your door um, and doesn't let you say anymore. And you're maybe not sure why, but anyway, that's just my take on, you know, I, I just think the Lord knows exactly what he's doing. He has a plan. He's doing it. And we just need to pray for this country. We need to pray that we will make right choices. Uh, well, why don't you put that in a prayer? I agree with you. That's well said. Go for it. Lord, I just thank you that We are, we are just praying that you would blanket this entire country in repentance. I've seen a blanket coming down over Kansas City, so I'm just going to say for this entire country that you would cause this blanket of repentance to be over us all. Lord, that it would hit everybody from the youngest to the oldest. I just thank you, Lord, and that you would start with the highest in office down to the youngest <laughs> all over this country, that you are giving us a chance, Lord, to repent and to call out your name and to know that you are God. And we can answer with a yes or a no. And I just cry out before this election finishes that there will be many in repentance and turning away and wanting you, Lord. There's nothing more than port 
important than your gift of repentance falling all over this country. We need to make decisions. Are we for you or against you? It's all about you, God. It's not about anything else but you. So I just pray that for this United States of America, that we would have our eyes fully opened and we would see you and that we would know that there is an invitation for Jesus and we'll either choose it or not choose it. But Lord, I thank you that you love the people, you want the people, and I thank you that they would be able to see you and feel you and know you and decide you're far more important than anything else that we've been doing. Lord, we cry out for this country to make a choice to go after you. In Yeshua's name I pray, amen. Amen, amen, amen. Well, I, I think you are right. You were absolutely spot on. That's just it. I loved your phrase, a blanket of repentance, that you literally saw that over Kansas City. I think that is profound. And I think that's the Lord. That's obviously, it's his gift. It's his gift. So many people don't see it yet as his gift, but it's a gift. And the wow. big thing to remember is that I saw that, but that doesn't mean everybody's going to say yes. He let me see that. But people make the choice to go after him or not to go after him. Right. And as we get close to him, we just, you see it more and more. Everything you do, he's the one that's in charge. You just have to keep your eyes on him. It's got to be less of us and more of him. Exactly. 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 Wow. Well, I love this call already, even though we've only done three or four slides here. I mean, this has really been beautiful. It's right on. It's all about cleansing as a bride and uh, individually, because a nation is made up of whatever number of thousand million people in that nation. It's really one on one from the highest in authority down to the smallest little child. You're right, Linda. That was good. Praise God. Wow. Well, let's look at the next slide. Wow. Which is, I learned it's the same word in Afrikaans. It's the same word in Australia. Wow means wow. That was the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Well, this also is to share with your teams. Obviously, this beautiful thing from Matthew 25, this parable. Ten bridesmaids, five were wise, five were not. And that's where we're at in nation after nation, in, in individuals. Are you with those that were sensible or were, were you not? Wow, I'm sorry. We've got behind me a... This is not here. Sorry, I was looking up a smoke alarm. Wow, we had a <laughs> we had a smoke alarm go off. So uh, yeah, we're we're used to a little spiritual uh, attack here. Oh, uh, Pastor Jeff, I had that happen just an hour ago trying to make what I thought. <laughs> <laughs> well, I really it, did. Another way, the Lord is. I did it just. It was. It's a good alarm, though. You know. I yeah. <laughs> It was like 9 11, 9 10 is yes, yes, I won't forget. For, well, you know what? I haven't really been downtown since 9 11, quite honestly. Oh. I've had to do, I've had to, I did some training speech, speech, speeches with ministry, ministry training in the um, Presbyterian churches in New York through cool. Toastmasters. You know, with, with the, there is a division of Toastmasters that I was able to do that through the Christian church. That's and and that was really the only reason why I was in New York, except for the Armenian church, because I take Bible <laughs> studies with them too, you know, with oh, the early cool. church. Yeah. So, but I don't really go in anymore. Everything with Berlitz for me, with my training and everything, it's remote. I'm a remote instructor with Berlitz, so I don't have to go into New York. And I actually prefer not to at this stage yeah. of my life. I want to keep my memories as they are, as archaic as that may sound. 
I'm, I'm not for a lot of stuff happening in the city anymore, you know? Yeah, it's been intense what's going on. That's my old hometown, yeah. too, for eight or nine years I was there. Yes, so. yes, yeah. Well, that was my stomping ground. You know, remember where the, the, the uh, trade center, the um, federal trade center customs offices, I used to spend a lot of time there with friends, you know, as wow. a kid, as a kid, because my mom worked in New York and later I did. I just prefer to keep those memories. I'm I'm all good with that, you know. That's very sweet. Great. <laughs> God Great. bless. You. Yes. Well, you know this wonderful parable. I mean, I'm preaching to the choir here, but I just think there are people that are going to awaken up as you and I teach this to them now, as we write about it, as we speak it out. Um, it's very serious the foolish ones say to the sensible ones give us some of your oil our lamps are going out no they reply there may not be enough for both you and us go to the oil dealers buy some for yourselves but as they were going off to buy the bridegroom came and those who were ready went with him to the wedding feast and the door was shut Later, the other bridesmaids came, sir, they cried, let us in. But he answered, indeed, I tell you, I don't know you. Whew. I think people are waking up to that as a truth, whatever they are, whatever their, even their politics, I would hope that they would wake up and say, hey, this is a day for me to choose life or death, eternity with him or without him. And um, I don't want ever to have him say, I don't know you. Wow. Uh, amen and amen. I never want that. <laughs> Hallelujah. <Yeah. laughs> so stay alert. You never know the day or the hour. It, it's That's the complete Jewish Bible translation. I, I, I love it. It's just very direct. You don't know the day or the hour. Now, we also are going to take another three minutes because sometimes stuff jumps out at you that you would never even expect. There may be a residue of a residue of something, and I will honor your privacy for three minutes. That's one of the things that's maybe unique about this call. In addition to praying, we give you some private times with the Holy Spirit, your teacher, to remove anything. And I think there's a place in this scripture because it, it says the girls woke up, they prepared their lamps for lighting. I think that means you cut off the dead part of the wick so that that wick will be fresh and easier to get lit by a lamp. And so in that sense, there may be something that you and I need to cut off to remove the old person in us so that we will be more of a vessel of light of Christ, of the Messiah. We will be a clean and clear vessel. So whatever that is, it'll be private between you and the teacher, your Holy Spirit, if you later want to share, great. But I'll be now quiet for three minutes. The smoke alarm is now quiet. <laughs> and I'll check back in in three minutes as you spend time with the Holy Spirit. See if there's something that you want to remove in removing that wick or trimming your wick. So God bless you.
Well, praise God. Thank you. Thank you for spending time with the Holy Spirit. Again, it's private, but anyone want to share, go on ahead. I don't know why the Lord's making me do all of this. <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> I have to start that way. I oh, I had a um, precious conversation with one of the um, teachers with Manhattan College's ISV ESL program this past summer and last summer. And it was about the uh, Torah and the Tanakh, you know, and I, I was getting ready to talk about the Kabbalah, how I, at the Talmud, I had some limited knowledge. I was getting ready to talk about the Kabbalah, which told him that I was interested in the mysticism, quote unquote, of Jesus. And he, in turn, the first year we talked about this, he said, the mysticism is not really to be known. And I'm saying to myself, why? I get tea from the monks, this mystic tea, you know, type of thing. Be trying to, you know, with with um, trying to be funny with marketing and and all. But um, I've been in. I received an email a few days ago to say why the Kabbalah is considered dangerous, and even with the uh, rabbinic scholars, the rebis. And so. I'm still not really understanding why it's dangerous. If you are following Jesus, he's going to keep you in righteousness unless there's something that he wants to reveal outside of the realms of what you know in your present walk. So it's not deterred my curiosity. I still want to know more, but I'm being cautious, you know. You're on mute. Yes, I muted myself. There is a guy with a uh, leaf blower in the background. For, forgive me. Well, does anyone have any word about that with that Kim just mentioned in terms of uh, her wisdom, her protection, looking into this and so forth? Um, Linda, have you studied that whole area at all? It's not from Jesus. That's all I can tell you. It's not from Jesus. You go after Jesus, you go after the word. Um, been told by others to stay far away from it. There's no, that's not Jesus. That's all. Sorry. That's, that's mm -hmm. going after another, whether you realize it or not, it's going after another religion. We have one and it's this one. And we don't go after anything else. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that would be my agreed point. You know, I used to be a new ager. I was fascinated with that stuff. And there's a, it was kind of like the shiny fake gold that is out here in California, which we call mica. It, it looks like gold, but it's fake. It's really worthless. And you just have to know how to say, you know, that's tempting, but... I want to go back to the real deal. And that's that would be my encouragement to you. There's a way to study it, but not get sucked in. Well, that's because you're right. Yes. And, and I think that's healthy. That's okay. I mean, I could write a volume on the new age, but I'm not going to get sucked into it any, anymore. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. I think that's really a, a good way to go. Okay. But that's right. I, will... I completely support what Linda said. Okay. Okay. All right. I was, I was told it would be okay if I did it through the Torah with, with Moses, I guess is the, is the path if I did that, but you're, you're both of you are really warning against doing it at all. So I guess I'll leave it alone. You know, it's the same spirit that if you look at Genesis, I think it's chapter 11, Okay. The very first group wanting to build the Tower of Babel. Yes. It's connected to that concept of let's make a name for ourselves. Oh. It's really directed towards, wow, let's let's do our own spiritual gig here. Okay. And, and I think that's so different than what the Lord wants is submission 
to him entirely, the almighty God Elohim, period. Yes. Okay. Like executive or Exodus 20. Yeah, Linda, go ahead. Kabbalah has nothing, nothing, nothing to do with the Torah. The Torah was written by the hand by the hand of man, not looking at God. It I'm sorry, I get real strong here. It it you stay away yeah, from no. it, like you stay away from seeking any kind of um Ouija boards or anything else. The Torah is God Almighty. And he's God Almighty, and he doesn't add anything to it. Okay, okay, Don, I I won't I won't do that. But you know, I did run into a Torah in a local shop here a couple of days ago. I walk into the store, and there was the uh, Ouija board. And I was actually on a prayer call, and after I had they prayed, I told them what I had seen coming into the store. So they prayed that demon out real quick. And so I said, <laughs> now I'm gonna now I'm gonna do Christmas shopping. <laughs> Yeah. I don't have to buy another thing for Christmas. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We have to remove a lot of stuff that was so strong in us. Uh -huh. It's interesting. Susan has just pointed out in the chat that she grew up under that. And as Linda is saying, mysticism isn't from the Lord. She's quoting 2 Corinthians 3. And it warns us, as long as we read Moses, there's a veil hanging over our hearts. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, that's why I was told to do it through through the Torah, through Moses. And I would at least I would yeah. at least understand what it is I didn't want to know. That's that's how it was explained to me. That's sweet. And good for you. Well, I also want to honor Linda here pointing out a really good point. The Jerusalem prayer breakfast will be in New York on September 15th, 16th this year, taking place in the USA since they know most won't fly to Jerusalem. Meeting has already been threatened, so please keep them in your prayers. Many right. will be there from several different countries. So who's got a prayer in your heart for protection for this Jerusalem prayer breakfast? Go on ahead if that's on your heart. Well, praise the Lord. Father in heaven, not only do I pray for protection for them, Father, I pray that you have the biggest bubble to keep them in your world of, of holiness and godliness, Father God, that not nothing can penetrate that. Only you and all that you want to be exchanged during that period. Father God, these are unprecedented times. We never know what's going to happen in New York. The behaviors are that volatile, Father. So we pray that through your precious blood, everyone in attendance of this event, their families, everyone, 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 Father God, you will be with them in spirit and truth and love. Mm -hmm. May there be nothing broken that's a part of this process, all perfect in you, in the mighty name of Yahweh. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yes, yes, yes. Lord, I just add to that prayer. I'm reminded that when um, on April 30th, way back in 18, uh, or rather 1787, I guess it was, or 89, there was the very first presidential inauguration. It was in New York City. And after George Washington spoke, they went to a church and he used the phrase, let there would the flame of the sacred fire of liberty be bestowed upon this nation. So Lord, I pray that there would be a memory of that, even as these dear friends of uh, Jews and Gentiles meet for this Jerusalem prayer breakfast, may there be that sacred fire of liberty from Almighty God that has been passed down, may that pass into their minds and hearts. May they see that it comes from the Messiah. And frankly, may many, if they haven't already seen the Messiah and claimed him, may many come into the kingdom through scripture, through one-on-one -on -one with believers, however it happens, Lord, May many come into your kingdom. I pray that in Yeshua's holy name. Amen. Amen. 
So praise God. Let's look at the next slide. Oh, how cool you put this together. Thank you, Susan. Yes, 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 yes. So good. This is a great one. This one ministry, Trumpet and Torch Ministries, is so anointed. I, I just get fed every time. The sister lives somewhere out in Virginia, is so anointed for this beautiful thing. This is out of Psalm 24, 9. Lift up your heads, O you gates. Lift up you everlasting doors, then the king of glory shall come in, shall come in. So here's the exercise. And I think it's just a perfect one to use and it'll be private again. What's causing your heart, even if there's any residue there, what's causing your heart to be unwilling to respond to his call of repentance? Wow, that's a good one, Susan. That is right on. That is so good. So we're preaching to the choir in one sense, but maybe there's something the Lord will show you. It'll be private. What's in any way holding you back? Wow, what a good and beautiful slide. Just a graphic is beautiful. So I'll be quiet. I will check back in three minutes. It's private between you and the teacher, the Holy Spirit. God bless you. Well, praise God. Again, this is private, but anyone want to share if this issue of being unwilling to respond to his call has come up for you? Go on ahead if that in any way was an issue. If you, if you want to share, you don't have to share, but if you sometimes you really want to to get rid of it. 
Kula Bashoto Kashalabalete. We'll praise God. Again, I would just encourage you, use this with your prayer teams. This is going to respond to a lot of people. Many, many people in your flock have not yet repented. I'll just be candid with you. The pastors, the priests, many have not yet repented. <laughs> Thus, that many more in the flock have not. I know a pastor who only counts converts that have repented. He doesn't count members. He doesn't count number of seats. He doesn't count, you know, donations or anything like that. He just said, you know, here's, here's Frank, here's Fred. He used to be an alcoholic. I reached him on the street. He now comes to church. He's been truly converted from his old ways. He's now born again, Holy Spirit, tongue talking convert. I can count him. And, and he grew his flock, by the way, he inherited a dormant old church in a traditional denomination, small community in Western New York. He started with seven people and he's now over 70 and they're converts. So I can tell you the Lord can do so much more with converts than just with members. So in virtually every church, this slide would be a great process you give people three minutes of privacy and that's fine you know you don't have to have them share honor their privacy but this is going to open up some thinking and minds and hearts well praise god let's look at the next slide i sort of want to keep this close to 90 minutes today we're running way over time but this is a key thing to look at israel which is really on our hearts Wow. So the truth is Adonai has this wonderful plan for Israel and how perfect we would be praying about the prayer breakfast coming up. We cited on this Isaiah 43, the whole book of Isaiah, it just is so timely today, but there, here it is in the 18 to 21 verses of the complete Jewish Bible. Stop dwelling on past events, brooding over times gone by. The wild animals will honor me, the jackals and the ostriches, because I put water in the desert, rivers in the wasteland. Yeah, that's our mighty God. For my chosen people to drink, the people I formed for myself so that they would proclaim my praise. That's what the Lord wants, Jew and Gentile for you and I to proclaim his praise. And then you know this wonderful Jeremiah 29, 11. It's interesting to see it in the complete Jewish Bible version. It says, I know the plans I have in mind for you, says Adonai, plans for well-being, not for bad things, so that you can have a hope and a future. When you call to me and pray to me, I'll listen to you. When you seek me, you will find me. And I love this phrase, provided you seek for me wholeheartedly. Wow, is that an hour's worth of teaching? And I will let you find me, says Adonai. Then I will reverse your exile. I'll gather you from all the nations and places where I've driven you, says Adonai. Bring you back to the place from which I exiled you. Wow. Well, you could all teach from that alone. Just to seek him wholeheartedly is the whole point. Have no other gods before me, the Lord says in the Ten Commandments. Well, praise God. Praise God. Let me just do a simple prayer. Lord, I just pray for Israel that many would come into the kingdom. This is the time they must see the threat even of Kamala Harris becoming now president, herself being very anti-Israel in truth, favoring a two-state solution and perhaps even moving away the uh, embassy from Jerusalem. God knows what she would do if she gets in office. So Lord, we just pray 
Oh, that they would turn to you historically, go back to the books of the Bible, go back to Jeremiah 29, 11, and seek you wholeheartedly. I just pray that in Jesus' name, amen, and amen, and amen. Go back to the one true Elohim, Adonai, Almighty God. He has a wonderful plan for Israel and every Jew, every Gentile. Praise God. Yes, and I'm just going to read this um, chat here. Spot on, Susan. She says, something that's standing out for me these last couple of days, God is looking for a people that would, she puts this in caps, proclaim his praise continuously. Bingo, that's right. That's the very reason why God wants to bring Israel back to their land, to proclaim his praises. Yeah. Wow, what would that look like? What would that look like? Oh my gosh, it would wake up the planet, wouldn't it? It would just wake it up like, what? Elizabeth, Israel is alive for the Messiah? Oh my gosh, it would be fabulous. Praise God. Yeah, they're still missing it, but we pray they'll get it. Let's look at the next slide. You can all preach from this stuff, I know. Well, yeah, here's now this next really good piece. You can preach and teach from this. I'm not going to spend time on this today, but you, you know that God's gift is repentance. It's certainly not equivalent to his blood. That's number one, the sacrifice of his blood, his love. However, right after that, really repentance and forgiveness of sins, it's, it's just so central to our belief system that you and I are called to use these scriptures. Teach from them. This is just a beginning page. We've never, we've been too busy. It's all good news. The fire of the Holy Spirit is breaking loose in Africa. So Susan and I are swamped. <laughs> And it's good news. We haven't revised this page, but it's just a beginning of a beginning. We could probably do three or four or five pages of this. Repentance is throughout the Old Testament and the New Testament, and it needs to be preached. Certainly, look at this. To heal the nation, what does the United States need today? Second Chronicles 7, 14. Was it mentioned? No, I wasn't hoping that it would. But I mean, yes, I was hoping. I'll say that I was, I mean, just would it be a miracle if Mr. Trump had said, well, there's another way to do this and that's call on him. Wow, he would have immediately won the presidency with that call, I think. But anyway, that's my view. Uh, preach it and teach from this page. Well, let's look for one more, maybe we can squeeze in one more um, slide and then look for the closing prayer here. Wow, here's another one, really for every flock that you're connected with. Oh my gosh, you know, this is one of the abominations to the Lord. In any way, sowing discord amongst the brethren, deception through gossip and lies or complaining. Wow, having been a pastor actively for 18 years, I know this goes on in virtually every church. It's really hard to get rid of that, but you and I have to be the ones that stand for this. Really what we are called to do is build up the unity of the spirit. Look at Ephesians 4, 2 and 4. It says, with all lowliness and meekness, this is for the, the priests and pastors, worship leaders and so forth, with all lowliness and meekness, with long suffering, for bearing one another in love, endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. There's one body and one spirit, even as you're called in one hope of your calling. Bingo. Yes, yes, yes. So again, I'm going to honor your privacy. This is the last one we'll do today. It's been an amazing call. But I'm going to give each one, including myself, three minutes. See if there's even a residue of a residue, a 
of this old, wow, what was it? A rebellious spirit, I guess, by which we thought we could gossip and make people wrong and pull stuff out of leadership that we didn't like. You got offended easy, blah, blah, blah. Whatever the issue, um, I'll honor your privacy and give you three minutes with the Holy Spirit, your teacher, to remove it being that much more cleansed as his bride. So I'll check back in in three minutes and God bless you. Yeah, Susan, just saying it's all about maturity. Exactly, bingo. Yep. Well, praise God. Thank you for spending time with the Holy Spirit on this issue. Again, it's private. But does anyone want to share, we'll make room for that. If that's something that you really did want to do, go on ahead. I'll just say again, having been a, a direct pastor, by which I meant every Sunday, we honored the I think today I would do it on a Saturday, but we were Sunday people those days. Um, I just saw this was a common place. It's almost like people came to gossip. It was a safe place to gossip. I'll tell you, there's a spirit that my wife and I had to really bring down time after time after time. And the pastor's wife got hit more than I. And she was the easiest target. Maybe Linda's had that experience. I don't know. But it, yeah, she's nodding her head. So this is this is for every church, certainly in my experience. Take down this. It's an abomination to the Lord. Sowing discord among brothers and sisters. That's Proverbs 6, 19. Well, praise God. And I also want to say, Wow, I'm so glad you shared this, Linda. She's going to Israel October 15th for the Feast of Tabernacles. This is on the chat. She says, I can't wait. It'll be a solidarity mission for intercessors to pray and see all that happened October 7th. He said to carry praise with me. Yes, I will. I can go only because some of my house church people are sending me so that's a praise, and I will see firsthand with my eyes all that happened. And that will help when I go to speak with the churches. Wow, how awesome. Lots of praise there, too. And praising him in his land just blows me away. How cool is that? What a privilege. What an honor. 
exciting. Do you want to say anything more? Do you want to say anything more, Linda? Or the thing is that this is different than any other time. The Feast of Tabernacles for ICEJ usually twenty to thirty thousand people, and of course nobody's coming because of the war. And they've said if you're an intercessor and you really feel God's told you to come, then come. We'll probably have no more than three hundred to five. And of course, the Lord, I have no money. And the next thing I knew, one of our church members said, we're going to send you. So I'm going. Wow. Well, Lord, we just pray right now. Open that gate, that beautiful gate of praise. And hear how perfect we're looking at this slide where Linda has just honored us with this truth. The more you praise him, the more you want to repent. The more you repent, you want to praise him. So she's going there, Lord. Would you protect her in this beautiful, remarkable visit? Give her traveling mercies. Give her just divine appointments. Wonderful, 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 amazing trip. Bless her. Bless Terry. The, bless the whole church family that is sending her, Lord. Just anoint her even earlier before she begins the trip. Even today with this simple prayer and others that she just would get the most out of this beautiful, remarkable time with you in your land. Wow. And I just pray all this in Yeshua's holy name. Amen and amen. Amen. Wow. Thank you. That's wonderful. Well, praise God. Let's look now at really, we have to look at some of the closing slides here. What a powerful call this has been today. So this one you've seen, see yourself as a, quote, Holy Spirit on fire, a, a fire of repentance, God's, God's gift of repentance. And as you preach it, as you talk about it, you become his spear. And I can tell you it is on fire. We're almost overwhelmed. Honestly, morning, noon, and night. It's wild what's going on in Africa right now. It's all good news. This is good news. They need money, but so what? That's that's typical. Many are getting saved. The fire is lit. So it's just something that you and I can do as much as we can keep the fire lit and he sees you as one of these spears it's not about any one of us it's there are many many spears able to be picked up and thrown through your social network through your network your immediate family however you do this just see yourself as uh, god's spiritual lovely wonderful weapon and it i love this point that it touch touches wherever it lands it touches hearts and nations so you know it could be nepal it could be finland it could be canada it could be ecuador it doesn't matter where it goes it's gonna light a beautiful fire well praise god let's look at the next slide yeah here we are creating some new declarations for october 7th by the way we just sent them um, to be loaded on our global repent website that we will have seven days of prayer, fasting and repentance starting on September 30th, leading up to a Zoom call on October 7th, that will be six o'clock um, Jerusalem time. And um, we've got the same lady, Stefania, who's a member of our board of directors has written those up and so you and i can just do these declarations too based on this truth that the lord gives us in luke chapter 10 verse 19 behold i give you he's put your name there the authority to trample on serpents and scorpions over all the power of the enemy nothing wow nothing means nothing nothing shall by any means hurt you I love that one, Luke 10, 19. Well, praise God, let's look at the next slide. Here's that happy guy. 
he removed God knows what. It could have been anger. It could have been, wow, jealousy, pride. I don't know what he got rid of, but a deep, deep joy results when you get rid of an old sin stronghold. And I believe this is part of Revelation 12, 11, by which you and I, we are the they there, they overcame him, and the him is the devil. You and I overcame the devil by the blood of the lamb, that's number one, and by the word of their testimony, that's unique to you and me, and they enabled us no longer to live our life fearing death. Really, they did not live their lives to the death. You get the strength to face death because you've removed all that was not of Adonai, Elohim, your Lord God Almighty, your indwelling Holy Spirit. You're now a vessel of the Holy Spirit. So what can death do to you? Nothing. You've got an eternity with Almighty God. Well, praise God. Let's look at the next slide. And that's who we are. Please keep us in your prayer. You can reach us as globalrepent.com or repentday.com. If you're listening on, because this is being live streamed and it's being recorded, you're in the USA, you want to make a donation. We would love that because we pass those donations on to pastors all over the map. I think in the last count, there's 17 or 18 that we're now supporting in about 11 different nations. It's really exciting. Or you can send a donation to our post office box 246 in Middletown, California. That'll get to us. And fruit will abound to your account. That's Philippians 417. There's a dear little old lady sends us $5 a month. Is she getting the blessing of what's going on in Africa, yes, 100%, as much as um, Susan and I are volunteering our time or others have put in funds, we all get blessed with fruit, regardless of the amount. So share your testimonies with us. You can reach me at Pastor Jeff at repentday.com. Susan, you can reach the super dear sister of God that is such a volunteer. Reach her at hammersusan1 at gmail.com. And we are putting out these testimonies. We have some amazing stuff. They, we could do that all day. I'll just say that to you right now. All day. This is going on in Malawi, in Kenya, Tanzania, <clears throat> Zambia. It's happening. It's happening. So thank you for your prayers and your support. It's happening thanks to you. Praise God. Let's look at the next slide. Who's got a closing prayer? This amazing call today. It's not easy to make it within 90 minutes. We, we overshot that target, but it was a beautiful, powerful call. Anyone have a, a closing prayer in your heart going ahead? <clears throat> well i feel like i've talked too much but i'll be glad to pray <laughs> <laughs> no 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 go for it just complete purdue we just complete Oops, all of a sudden, we can't hear you, or at least I can. Oh, there we go. Oh, I'm sorry. I don't know about my internet. We just want to seek your face, Lord, and we thank you for this time to do it. And we thank you you'll take us deeper and deeper in you. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Oh, perfect prayer. Thank you, Linda. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Susan. Thank you, Catherine, Anthony, Lillian. Jessica, all that have been on, others that have been listening to this recording and live streaming. And there's that beautiful lake or river. 
Um, whether it's the Sea of Galilee or it's something nearby to where you live, uh, it's the peace of Christ when I look at that beautiful graphic and, and his shalom. It's the peace that passes all understanding. So until next time, by the way, tomorrow, God willing, Africa kneels. Praise God, praise God, praise God. That will be an amazing call. I'll tell you ahead of time. Yes, 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 yes. So shalom, everyone. Until next time. Congratulations, Linda. I'm so excited about your trip. It's like I get to go with you in the spirit. I'm ready. I'm signed up. I'm I'm signed up to be there. Yay. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. That's really exciting. Susan and the rest of us will all be with you in spirit. You know that. So mm -hmm. you'll be there in person, but we'll be there in spirit with you every step of the way. I'm really excited already. Thanks for letting us know. <laughs> Praise God. And send us some photos. Yes, yeah, Susan is already going to do a super, super uh, article on this. I can see it coming up. Praise God. Well, shalom, everyone. Until next time. Until shalom, time. everyone. Thank you for joining. <laughs> Many shalom. blessings. Bye, everyone.